Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports England. Going down to the All Blacks, 24 points to 17. What a test match we have just witnessed over at Eden Park. And the All Blacks keep that incredible record of not losing a game there since 1994 intact. Um, it wasn't easy. In fact, England, I think, very much will be feeling a little bit hard done by with regards to how they dominate a game. But at the end of the day, it's all about who takes the opportunities and who, um, you know, arrives on the night. And I'll tell you what, Bowden Barrett might have just played one of the all-time great cameo performances, coming off the bench and almost single-handedly changing that game, creating tries, you know, managing the game, you know, try, try saving efforts. It was absolutely sensational for the All Blacks, who have not looked massively fluid and comfortable yet under Scott Robertson, but are two wins from two. And this week, it is a bit of a bigger margin, but arguably an even tighter game. Let's get into it, shall we? Before we do, smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel as well. It was a good start for the All Blacks. Mark Talea went over in the 10th minute. Really poor defense from England, who had a lot of opportunities, a lot of field position, um, and uh, then just not guarding the side of the ruck. Mark Talea looking up and see no space down the blind side, taking it, sniping it, and almost a great tackle from uh, Emmanuel Ferrer Bosi, but in vain as Mark Talea opened the scoring and uh, Dan McKenzie added the extras. However, a minute later, the perfect cross kick waiting from Marcus Smith into a bit of space. Saw Emmanuel Ferrer Bosa run onto it, get inside Damian McKenzie and uh, dive over with uh, Marcus Smith adding the extras to make it seven points apiece. Six minutes later, um, after a bit of a siege of New the New Zealand half, um, the All Blacks managed to get themselves back into the England territory, winning penalties in the 20th minute, um, which um, Dan McKenzie slotted, and then in the 37th minute. The momentum in the first half, I think, was genuinely with England, as was, was for much of the game. But again, not taking their opportunities. However, a perfect, perfect try just before half time. Once again, penalty of art, brilliant cross kick, and uh, Tommy Freeman, what a take it was. Timing it perfectly, just jumping in front of Mark Talea, hands right at the top there, plucking it out of the sky, going over. Marcus Smith making no mistake. England actually taking a one point lead into half time. And uh, they started the second half where they left off in the first, to be honest. Uh, right back on the front foot, they got an early penalty through uh, Marcus Smith to make it 17 points, 13. And uh, they were on the back foot with the All Blacks. I genuinely think for about 15 to 20 minutes of that second half, they never got into, into um, uh, England territory. And uh, then Scott Robertson made one big decision. He sent on Burden Barrett in 49th minute and the rest, as I say, it's history. It genuinely was that big of a cameo. He just turned the game. Um, you know, created the try, had some really good moments, almost created another try, uh, you know, right towards the end. It turned out to be a penalty, but actually there was a running more that was held up over the line. He actually held it up. Um, so it was actually fantastic. Uh, so he sets up Mark Talea in the 60th minute. Um, Damien McKenzie misses the, uh, the, the kick. It's a one-point game. And then uh, two late penalties, Damien McKenzie in the 68th and the 74th minute. He was almost flawless off the tee. So final score, 24 points to 17. Uh, England actually only in the lead for 20 minutes. Uh, so I suppose in that kind of perspective, it felt like the All Blacks had more dominance. But um, you definitely look at the, the momentum. And uh, I think England, you know, very much had more. Uh, New Zealand were far more clinical. You know, 10 entries into the 22 from England, 7 from New Zealand. So New Zealand averaging 2.5 points per entry. England just 1.4. That kind of sort of shows you really. Uh, once again, interesting enough, you look at the ruck speed. England playing really, really quickly. 56% of their rucks between uh, 0 to 3 seconds. Um, so it's a different style of, of play with England. Uh, we're definitely starting to see a bit of the sort of the Steve Borthwick influence and uh, they're playing really, really nice rugby. Uh, let's look at some of the stats, shall we? If you look at territory, England was 62% of possession. Uh, the ball um, played majority in that sort of between the halfway and the 22. 34% of the match played in that in the All Blacks half, but 28% of the match, or uh, you know, more than a quarter played inside the All Blacks 22. Um, so I suppose in one, in one sort of go, I suppose you then look at the, the, the defensive effort from the All Blacks, um, which needs to be applauded. If you look at the possession, 51 to 49, um, England uh, very much dominated possession for most of the time, um, but uh, All Blacks had kind of sort of spells. If you look at the set plays, for example, scrum for England were not great. England, with a, I mean, New Zealand with a 100% scrum success rate. The lineups were pretty awful on both sides. New Zealand just 77%, lineup win percent. Uh, England with 90. Um, if you look at the restarts, also a little bit messy, to be perfectly honest. Uh, if we look at the attack, um, post-guarding meters, 238 for the All Blacks, 231 for uh, for England, not much 
of a change of, of a difference there. Six line breaks to four, 90 to 107. You know, so very similar with that in regards to those sort of stats. Uh, turnovers, I thought that New Zealand were much better on, on the ground, winning six turnovers to New Zealand, I mean, to England's two. Uh, penalties conceded, England discipline was a bit of an issue. 11 penalties conceded. I'm pretty sure New Zealand only conceded one penalty in the first half, um, which I think was massive considering the amount of pressure um, that, that, were, that they were under. And uh, a different day, a few more penalties, and I think England all of a sudden going to win the game. A bit like last week, they didn't take their chances um, with regards to the three points on offer this time didn't have as many chances to actually take. Uh, defensively, All Blacks making 123 tackles, missing just 16 with a tackle completion rate of 88%. Uh, England with 115 tackles made, 28 missed, a tackle completion of 80%. Lots of kicking. Uh, 36 kicks from hand from New Zealand, 29 from England. So interesting to see what the reaction will be to that. Um, certain teams are always um, taken apart for, their, for the amount of tough time they kick. But we are seeing a lot of kicking. The best teams in the world do kick. It's... Not a new phenomenon either. Uh, we look at some individual uh, uh, players. Uh, ben Earl carried the most across the game. 16 carries from him. I didn't think it was his best first half. Got a lot better in the second half. Mark Slayer with 12. Jordy Barrett with 8. Stephen Perifito with uh, 7. Showing you kind of the difference. Uh, far more backline players getting involved. If you look at line breaks, Mark Slayer with 2. Um, the big tactical shifts being put in was Jamie George with 15. Jordy Barrett with 13. Scott Barrett with 13 as well. The Barrett's getting involved. Finn Baxter on his uh, sort of full debut. Starting for the first time with 12 tackles as well. Uh, turnovers on the ground there, a couple of, of, of good ones. Dr. Papali had a very important one. Um, as to Finn Baxter, to be fair, if you look at the, at the attack, Mark Talea, 89 uh, meters carried, defenders beaten. Dave McKenzie, 6. Mark Talea, 4. Artis Sevier, 4. Uh, Jordi Barrett with 2. Jordan Bowden Barrett as well with 2. Emmanuel Ferry Webosa was the best carrier for England, and uh, he beat 4 defenders. Um, I think both teams will look at that game, and, and I think there'll be positives. And uh, uh, reason to be excited, I think, as, as an England fan, because you're seeing progression. For a New Zealand fan, I think uh, probably people will be very, uh, uh, you know, cautious to be, to be, um, to look too much into that. We don't know what it's going to look like under Scott Robertson. Still so much that needs to change, but I don't think they've been at their best just yet. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.